The Unexpected Floppy Iris Small Pupil Cataract Simple Pearls for Beginning Surgeons Financial Disclosure I have no financial interest in this presentation. In a perfect world, we would use an iris retractor at the beginning of surgery to avoid catching or damaging the anterior capsule later in the case. But what do you do when the pupil shrinks halfway down the road of no return? Do you go ahead and use your iris retractors or iris rings and risk ripping through your perfect capsule rexus? In this video, we'll cover five basic tips to manage the unexpected small pupil. Tip number one, be precise. Minimize instrument exchanges. Each time an instrument is removed and placed again through the main incision, there is risk of iris damage. Pause for a moment. What this does, is that it allows the intraocular pressure to decrease enough for you to safely exit the eye without bringing the iris along with your tools. Tip number two, be gentle. Use second hand with viscoelastic assisted manipulation of iris to prevent prolapse. The viscoelastic creates a barrier to separate the iris from the phaco tip. High molecular weight viscoelastics are preferable. Avoid posterior pressure on incisions with your instrumentation. This includes both the primary phaco instrument and the secondary instrument as well. Any pressure on the incision with your left or right hand will cause egress of your viscoelastic and potentially loss of iris. Tip number three, less is more, know when to stop. Avoid the overuse of viscoelastic as the increased intraocular pressure will force iris prolapse through the main incision. If it occurs, use an alternate paracentesis to lower the eye pressure and then use viscoelastic to reposition the iris. At some point when the pupil is just too small to continue, know that it's okay to stop. There's no place for pride in the operating room. You don't have to place an iris expansion device all on the same day and risk tearing your anterior capsorexis. After all, the enemy of good is perfect and the enemy of perfect is vitreous loss. Tip number four, pause. Take a breather. Intracameral gas can be helpful in select cases to keep the iris away from the incisions. Don't be afraid to stage the procedure and come back later, especially in monocular cases. In this video example, Coming back seven days later to the operating room gave the patient's iris enough time to recover. Full iris recovery, pharmacologic dilation, and safe placement of retention iris hooks as a precaution under direct visualization of the anterior capsule. This way we avoided the risk of ripping the anterior capsorexis when the pupil was small. Tip number five, take your time. Use bimanual techniques with smaller incisions to avoid wound egress. Bimanual IA allows approaching removal of cortex strangled around the IOL haptic from different angles without having to do unnecessary intraocular acrobatics. Routine post-op appointments in patients that had the unexpected pupil constriction with floppy iris during surgery are the most memorable. With practice, these tips will help you conquer the floppy iris.